take a shot every time I say I'm excited for this book because it's gonna be quite a few times for this haul. Sweet angels, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with a book haul. I have 26 books to share with you before I put them up on my shelves. A lot of these books are like so perfect for autumn and like fall spooky season, so I am very excited because it is spooky season and I need to read them. Most of them are from publishers, but I do have a few that were sent to me by my friend Molly and a couple that I bought myself. So without further ado, let us get started. Okay, first up, I have six from Orbit Books. They really spoiled me over these last couple of months. They are all fantasy and all of them sound so stinking good. I'm so excited. The first one is Long Live Evil. This is by Sarah Rees Brennanen. This one may be the one that I am most intrigued by. This follows a girl named Ray who is dying and so she makes a magical bargain and she gets transported into the world of her favorite fantasy series. Sounds so cool, right? But plot twist, she finds out that she is actually the love interest of the evil villain character. So she is the villainess. I love that because if you know me and you've been on this channel for a while, I am usually a sucker for the villain. I always like the villain. I always love to hate them. So I am so intrigued to see a story from, I guess, kind of the villain's perspective, if you think about it. I think it sounds so cool. I have this one on audiobook, so I'm hoping to pick it up fairly shortly. Next up is The Phoenix Keeper. This is by S.A. McLean, and I truly don't know too much about this one other than it has phoenixes, and I was a sucker for Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpatro and have been on the hunt for more books with phoenixes in it. So I am so excited for this one. It says that it features a magical zoo teeming with mythical beasts and a soul restoring queer romance at its heart. And that's all I need to know, to be honest. Next up, I was sent the first book in the Witcher series. This is by Andrzej Zapowski. I believe that they are getting new covers and that is why it got sent out. But the new covers, like you can see them at the bottom. I don't know if the camera will focus, but I really like them. They're very, very simple. I have not watched the Netflix series, but me and my boyfriend are looking for another show to watch because we just finished Only Murders in the Building. This may be the next one that we go to. This follows Jeral, who is a witcher, who is basically a hunter. He has been waiting for the birth of a prophesized child for quite some time now. This child has the power to change the world for good or evil, so the witcher is in charge of figuring out which one that is, and so word of her birth comes and he has to hunt her down in order to stop a war from happening. I think it sounds pretty cool. I'm on a fantasy kick right now, so I'm very intrigued. Next up is Mistress of Lies. This is by K.M. and Wright, and and I am obsessed with this cover, first off. It says a villainous heroine finds herself plunged into a seductive world of power, politics, and murder in the court of the Vampire King in this bloodthirsty debut from an unmissable new voice in fantasy romance. Romanticy and vampires sounds right up my alley. I'm a Twilight girly at my heart. So I am excited to see another vampire story. The last couple that I've read have been a little disappointing, so I'm hoping that this one is much better. The next book that I have is The Last Hours Between Worlds. This is by Melissa Caruso. This follows a star investigator. Her name is Kembrel, and she just wants to enjoy the new year party that is going on, but then people start dropping dead, and it is up to her to figure out what mysterious forces are pulling the world down into a nightmare. Also, we have a badass girl holding a sword on the cover, so I am definitely excited for this. Next up is The Gods Below by Andrea Stewart. This is the author of The Bone Shard Daughter, which I have not read, but I've heard amazing things about. It doesn't have a synopsis on the back, but it does say that it is a sweeping tale of warring gods, loyalty, betrayal, and a world in turmoil. Also, we got two snakes fighting on the cover, and that seems scary to me. The next two books that I have are both from Simon & Schuster Canada. The first one is 24 Seconds From Now by Jason Reynolds. This follows a boy named Neon who 24 months ago met his girlfriend Aria and it's basically about the first time that they're going to have sex. 
from what I'm understanding from the back. This is another one that I have on audiobook from my library, so hopefully you guys will see it on a wrap-up soon. Then I have I The West Wind. This is by Alexandria Warwick, and this is a Greek mythology retelling of Hero and Leander. It also says that it has a sprinkle of the Scottish ballad Tamlin, which I will not lie, I do not know that, but I do really love Greek mythology, so I'm always down for a retelling. Then the next two books that I have are from Hatch book group and the first one is The Scholar in the Last Fairy Door. This is by H.G. Perry. It says, step into a mythic tale of secret scholarships, fairy curses, and the deadliest spells of all, the ones that friends cast on each other. I'm hoping that this is heavy on the fairies. Obviously, I don't know since I haven't read it yet, but I'm a sucker for anything with fairies, so fingers crossed that it actually has some. And then they also sent me over The Black Hunger. This is by Nicholas Pullen, and this is a dark gothic horror novel. It says that it's about a man named John who is about to die, and he is is basically telling us how he got to that situation. I don't know if he is like a criminal or if like something bad happened. I don't know but if it's a horror novel I'm thinking that something bad probably did happen but I am definitely intrigued. Then St. Martin's Press sent me over Sacrificial Animals. This is by Kaylee Peterson and from what I am getting from the synopsis is that it is about these two brothers. One is named Nick, the other is Joshua and they are both invited to their estranged father's farm and Joshua was disowned by the family for marrying this woman and when Nick arrives and meets this woman they start getting very flirtatious and then their relationship turns intimate. Nick realizes that her intentions may be a little more sinister than he once thought so I'm thinking maybe it's like a cult situation or like maybe this woman is a witch and she's gonna sacrifice him because it's a sacrificial animal. I don't know but I am definitely intrigued it says that it is a supernatural horror and that it offers a vision into a dark and vengeful mythology rooted in Chinese folklore. So I am definitely intrigued by this. I'm hoping that this is one that I can get on audiobook fairly soon. The next book was sent to me by Harper Voyager and it is The Night Ward. This is by R.S.A. Garcia and it is the first book in their new duology. It says that it is Caribbean mythology meets the Witcher. It introduces a world where woman warrior magicians rule. Okay, yes. Yeah yes please, and a child princess and her bodyguard must flee an attempted coup and evade the wave of darkness sent to kill her. Color me intrigued. This is another one that I really hope I can get to very soon because it sounds so good. Next up, Forever sent me I'll Have What He's Having. This is by Adib Koram, and I just read The Breakup List, I think last month, by this author, and I did really enjoy their writing style. I gave it a four out of five stars. This is their adult novel, and it follows these two 30-year-olds who have a one-night stand, they become friends, and then they realize that they should not continue a relationship, they should just be friends with benefits, but then they fall in love along that journey, and it's it's kind of the story of them trying to figure out life. I think it sounds really cute. I'm intrigued. I love me a good romance every once in a while to clear all the horror and fantasy from my palette. It's like a fun little time, you know? Then Henry and Holt sent me over A Bomb Me for Two. This is by Trinity Nguyen and this takes place in Vietnam. It says that it is a delicious romance about family food and finding home together. I think it is about these two girls having crushes on each other and maybe kissing a little bit. And you know I am a sucker for that kind of thing, so I am intrigued. It also has really pretty sprayed edges, and it is fairly short, so this one will probably be on my wrap-up fairly soon. Next up, Squarefish sent me I Feed Her to the Beast and the Beast is Me. This is by Jasmine Shea, and I'm actually going to be getting the second book in this series sometime in November, so I am definitely going to be binging this duology. I believe it's a duology. But it follows this black ballerina. Her name is Lore, and she is very very tired of being overlooked in the ballet community and so she goes to the Paris catacombs and discovers this river of blood that she casually wades into and is possessed, I guess you could say, by a power tripping demon or it might just be her. She quickly realizes that she may be a little bit over her head with all this power and so she has to decide whether or not she's gonna try to get rid of the power or to succumb to it and get everything that she's ever wanted. Personally, I think she should get everything she's ever 
ever wanted, but that's just me. And then Tor.com sent me the city in glass. This follows a demon and an angel. The demon burns down this city and this woman ends up being bound to the angel and she is grieving. She has lost everybody that she loves and then a war comes to the city and she has to decide with this angel whether or not she's going to stop the war or let it burn the city to the ground once again. Another pretty short one. So this is one that I can probably fly through pretty quickly. And then Macmillan also sent me over five children's books, which I am so excited for. My cousin actually just had a baby boy. The first one, classic is Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? This is by Bill Martin Jr. He's the author of The Very Hungry Caterpillar, The Very Busy Spider, those kind of books. D classics. Next up so, is If Animals Kiss Goodnight. This is by Anne Whitford Paul and it looks so stinking cute. It's just a bunch of animals being put to bed by their moms and dads and I think it's so precious. The next book that they sent was A Sick Day for Amos McGee and this is by Philip C. Stide and it's basically about this man named Amos who goes and visits the zoo and all the animals and then one day he wakes up and he has a cold and so the animals are waiting for his arrival and they are very very sad because where is Amos? And then they all decide that they're going to go visit him on his sick day and it is so cute. I think it's so so sweet and they like read him a story and then they go to bed with him and then they take a little sick nap and it is just so precious. I love these books. Then they sent over On the Night You Were Born. This is by Nancy Tillman and it's basically a story about how special somebody is and on the night they were born so many things happened because they were born and it's just very precious. And then the next one is probably my favorite that they sent over because I think it is just so stinking cute. But it is The Pout Pout Fish by Deborah Dyson. There are multiple stories about this Pout Pout Fish. They're all on the back. Basically just him going through his adventures and he's just a very sad looking fish and I think it is adorable. Like he is just so cute and everything he just goes blah blah blah. I think it is going to be so much fun to read this with my cousin. The next two books are from my friend Molly Lakovich. She is a author, which I love all of her books. There were two that I do not own yet and I have a whole shelf dedicated to Molly because I'm just so proud of her. So she sent me Send in the Clowns. This is one of my favorite books by her. I think it is so much fun. It's very different from the other things that she's written, but it basically follows this girl named Bunny and she goes to a circus one night and she meets three clowns that change her life a little bit. And that's all I'm gonna say because I think that you should should read it because it is a sexy fun time. And then Getting With the Ghoul is the second book in the Sleeping Hollows series that she's writing. I believe that there is a third one coming sometime. But this one follows Samantha who is Arletta from the first books, her best friend, and she has been feeling a little bit lost since Arletta left to go live in Sleepy Hollow. So she is going to jump from a tower and then she meets a ghoul demon named Al and he kind of changes her mind and it is a lot of fun. Then the next couple of books are all ones that I bought myself. The first one is Defy the Night by Bridget Kremer. I actually read this before. I gave it a five out of five stars but I did not own it so I found it on Facebook Marketplace for five dollars and I have been on the hunt for it because I personally do not buy books at full price. I only buy them from Facebook Marketplace or thrift stores because book prices in Canada are like 30 to 40 dollars and your girl cannot afford that. So I'm always on the hunt for books that I really really loved and this was one of them that I found. The other one that I found on Facebook Marketplace is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. This is so popular right now. It is so chonky. I did not realize how thick of a boy this was but I found it on Facebook Marketplace for ten dollars and on Amazon right now in Canada it is 30 something dollars so I figured we were gonna snatch her right on up now it is in my possession I don't know too much about this other than it is a TikTok sensation right now and it has dragons in it and that's all I really need to know anything with dragons I will read it and then the final book that I purchased at a thrift store in the United States of America because me and my mother went on a road trip because we haven't been since COVID is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern this is the author of The Night Circus which I really enjoyed it's one of my mom's favorite authors and she was the one who told me to read The Night Circus so when I found a hardcover for only three dollars which is like five dollars Canadian I was gonna snatch it up and I've been on the hunt for this but this is another one that is like thirty five dollars in Canada so five dollars 
much, much more reasonable if you ask me. My mom will probably read this way before I read it, but I do have it on audiobook. All right, so. everybody. So that was my 26 book haul. Thank you so much to the publishers and also Molly for sending me over their books. I'm so excited to pick them up. Hopefully you will see them soon on some of my wrap ups. Let me know down below if you have read any of these, which ones you think I should read first and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.